Right, I'm going to get my run in. I've come out to a little village called Wyston, and there's a towpath down the canal that runs to somewhere called Drake Hole's Tunnel. Lovely scenic place, but the weather's shite. So I'm going to do a mile out, mile back. <clears throat> at least I got the run in. I just dropped the stuff off at the liquidators. It was difficult. Uh, I can't wait to draw a line under the whole affair. It's, uh, it's really grinding me down. But positive, positive. I feel better after a run, I'm sure. <sighs> Don't know if you can hear me because of wind. I'm pleased with that. 17. 37, so I've shaved off 23 seconds from yesterday. Right, I'm freaking starving. Let's get back in the car and get some food, man. <sighs> yes, shower changed, going back to work at quarter past three. I feel fucking great, man. Yes, and I've got the dog in the back of the car again. He loves coming over. Right, back in the shop, folks. I'm kind of psyched to get a few jobs done before Gemma finishes work. She'll probably take the car at about five o'clock, six o'clock, and go and pick Abigail and Dominic up from her mum's. So I've got strip lights up here. I want to take out the ballasts and wire it up so that it doesn't require starter motors uh, and, it's, and it's not using extra energy to run the ballast. So to do that, I have to first move this light here and that needs to be piggybacked off the one next to it. There are actually three bulbs there, and two this side. So I want to put one horizontally above you, so some lights cast on my face when I stand here talking, because I think this is the position I'm going to be doing a lot of the filmmaking in. Or maybe this kind of position with the tools framed. I don't know yet, I've not made my mind up, but I do know I want to change this lighting. Right, I've taken the light down folks because I think it's going to be easier for me to show you what to do. This here is a ballast. These here, they call them tombstones. And this here is just a fuse actually. So we can leave that in and use it as a fuse. Or we can come straight off the main power supply which is here. And we just need to send the power to one of these tombstones. There's one either end. There's one this end and one to other end because these bulbs, these new fangled LED fluorescent tubes only take the AC input on one end. You can see there, AC input. So that's live and neutral. The other end is just there for show, okay? Okay, so first thing I want to remove is this little earth pin. Now this connects the whole metal body to the earth on the mains inlet and then we're also going to get rid of this capacitor and the cables. This tombstone on this end it doesn't require any power whatsoever. That tombstone should slide off and then I should also be able to pop it open Easy does it. There we are. So these two cables, they are just held in. There we go. Just have to tweak this little plastic, this little metal thing there. And that bit in there. Press it down. And... She's back together. Moving across now to the ballast. I'm hoping I can just undo these screws at the back and the nuts will come off on the front. So the idea rem behind removing the ballast is that this is still going to be consuming a small amount of electricity, even though it's not required. And it makes the fitting a whole lot lighter. Right now, the next section is where you'd put the 
starter motor or in this case with the LED lights it's actually a fuse it's normally a 2 amp fuse so it's not actually needed the mains is on an MCB it's fused anyway so with just a little bit of care we should be able to pop that whole thing out and get rid of it all together and then we're way across at the other side now at the other tombstone pop these up they can be a bit fiddly but these ones are these ones are behaving quite well there we go just a little twist and lift and that's the cables out so that's now unthreaded all the cables on the whole light fitting so we have a brown cable here coming from the old ballast so if I take that off so what I'm going to do is just shove one of the cables just in there like that and it's grabbed it and then we've got a blue section in here as well luckily enough so same thing just find the section underneath you can feel the spring loaded section in the middle give it a push and there we go it's bitten it's bitten hold of it and it won't come off which is perfect so it hooks over the top these two sections on the outside they just need nudging into there and there you can see we've got the tombstone the live and neutral running across I'll feed it under here so I've taken the chocolate block off so I can feed the power supply in from the same direction through the edge of the tombstone I've got the terminal block here the earthing pin just there so what I'm going to do is just cut and strip a fresh, fresh section of the live and neutral and because it's single strand I like to just I like to just fold it over like that so that the grub screw in the chocolate box has something to bite hold of neutral tighten down live tighten down tiny bit of a sheaving for there and then we're going to come across put a 90 onto it hello Oh, Stu? No. <laughs> yeah, I brought it down here, there's a bit more space. We've got visitors. <laughs> Bonkers dog. What time is it? Four o'clock? Five to five. Oh, it's a bit late today, anybody? Ah, oh, so we had a couple of visitors there. Steve and Pete. Anyway, you've seen me do that, so I've attached the cable as I promised. So we've got the live and neutral running to the tombstone on the end, and the mains coming in. So now all I'm left to do is pop that earth terminal back on the little clip in there, and we'll give her a test run. Make sure we've got the right end which is that one we give it a half rotation pick up the plug stick her in the wall and turn her on and that's how they work oh there we go so you can see she illuminates nicely so that's ready now to be mounted back up onto the ceiling. Well that's that bad boy done so now all I'm going to do is exactly the same to that one and exactly the same to that one and before I reinstall here's a shot of a double gang so again you've got tombstones either end you see those two there removed everything off the back then all we have is a live and a neutral feed coming in. 
they come straight into one of these you can see the split there and then that connection goes over to the same connection there and that connection goes over to the same one there so if you like we can say L N and if we follow that bad boy round then there we have L L N N that's all you're doing and then that piggybacks across to that end oh, look. that should be blue never mind has he been here all day? no when I went to Sheffield I took him uh, I took him home Did you put any food down? I thought you gave him some food this morning mm, well oh. oh boy um, if I get Manky, can you move van for me and I'll move the car out? I can get car out. Sure? Yeah. Is that right for the angle? No, I can get it out. Let's get it. It's getting on. It's really getting late. 17 minutes past eight. Time hasn't been wasted though. Check out what I've made here. So you know I bought a new router. Well, I also had an old one, right? A Rockworth router. So I also had a router table, a real cheap tool tech one. So I've always had a problem mounting this router to it. So to solve that problem, I've decided to install a car jack and extend the legs. And then when I want to make a cut, all I have to do is just wind up the car jack and up comes the router bit. So I can actually use it as a router table. The trouble is, this only takes quarter inch bits. I don't know if you can see under there, just quarter inch. So dead simple, extended the legs just with some 2 by one and then I've got a little bit of 3 by one as a brace on the bottom. 3 by 2 sat on top of that. Then with a car jack on there and it's one of these car jacks that's got this dial on the front and I'm actually strong enough to just twist that that makes it really convenient. Right, Gemma is here somewhere. We can see we've got chancy pants there. So I'd better get ready to go. It's not often I come in at half past eight from work. We've had a good solid 12 hours at it today. I feel like I've achieved loads. Won't know how much we've captured on film until we see the edit. But I've spent. So I'm going to open a couple of cans of cider. I've just had a gamma ray, that was nice. We'll have some food. There's a couple of chicken legs here, I might pinch them. And I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah, don't let that